Although software update v64 has been rolling out to the Quest 3 and the Quest 2 for a little while now, there's still benefits that Meta didn't announce in their original blog that are being found through testing it. We told you a couple weeks ago in the news how Meta was demonstrating their new scene script. This is a software that was actually using machine learning to automatically detect all of the objects in a room and try to figure out what they are. It's unconfirmed whether that was the exact technology brought into v64, but now after doing your room setup, if you choose to add furniture, it's trying to automatically detect what everything is in the room so you don't have to manually map everything out yourself. Great for VR experiences, but especially beneficial in mixed reality because it'll automatically map out a table for you and then mixed reality experiences sometimes use this table to set down your weapons for you or to have creatures inside the experience actually interact with your furniture. It's a big step in the right direction, especially as the Quest 3 has had a depth sensor all along and it's felt like it's been underutilized. It now seems that in combination with that sensor, potential machine learning, that we're actually gonna start to have hopefully an easier room setup up. Personally, for me, I hope it just means it remembers my rooms a little better. It does seem like that's improved a lot since the Quest 3 launch, but I'm still having to remap rooms all the time. I know a lot of you are still waiting on V64. It hasn't shown up for you, but if you have, have you noticed this? Is it doing a good job of mapping out the rooms, or does it feel like it's still kind of glitching on you when you go to set it up? I'd love to know. Recently, I found my favorite new head strap for the Quest 3, the Bobo VR S3 Pro. Between the integrated fan, the readout screen, the 10K battery pack, and the hot swap ability, I'm really liking it. We have some full reviews I'll leave linked at the end of the video in case you want to learn more about it. But I mentioned to you, it's been only available on the Bobo VR store for a while and some of you were holding out to buy it on Amazon. It is showing up as available and in stock, although the delivery date is about a month out currently. But for those of you who are hoping to get it on Amazon, there's gonna be a link in the comments, the description down below if you want to try and get your hands on an Amazon one quickly. That way you also can get that easy Amazon return if you decide the head strap isn't for you. Along with that, some of their other accessories have been launching recently and showing up here. We've got more reviews coming on the rest of them for you. But now just a quick reminder, if you wanted this or you haven't gotten it, there'll be links down below to get it over on Amazon, Bobo VR's website, or if you want to enter in our giveaway that Bobo VR is doing, you might be able to win yourself some accessories too. If you've tried YouTube VR before on your Quest 2 or your Quest 3 and it seemed like it was just a blurry mess, it might actually be worth getting back in and checking it out now. It's now supporting 8K playback, whether you're watching actual regular flat videos or even 360 videos. I got in and checked this out myself and the first question that you might have though is if the Quest doesn't actually have 8K resolution inside the headset, is there a point to watching these videos at all? Between the encoding and the downsampling, it does seem like the 8K videos do look better. You need to verify when you're clicking on them though, because it'll try to probably play them in 1440 or maybe 4K depending on your internet speed. They do look better, although it instantly reminded me that you're looking at an LCD screen when you're looking through the Quest 3 because it doesn't have the great color pop that you might get from an OLED TV or even a QLED TV. And ultimately it felt like I still wanted to watch those videos on a TV instead, but the 360 videos actually look decently good if you can get past the fact that most of them you can't tilt your head to the side at all or things will get all messed up. Ultimately, it was cool to revisit and it's something that I might put people in to just let them see what the headset can look like with better graphics, but it's not something I'm going to be spending a lot of my time in now with the new update. Let me know your thoughts after you try it though. We love reporting on VR news, VR games here, but as far as the VR drama side of things, I don't usually keep up on it, and especially this weekend when people messaged me asking if I knew what was happening on Twitter, I had no idea. Basically, there was a three-way fight going on between some of the top people at Meta and some of the former people that had been there. There's a full write-up over on Upload VR that'll help give you links to the actual thing. If you're interested in keeping up on what's going on, I just thought it might be worth a quick mention here though. Basically, Palmer Lucky, John Carmack, who used to work at Meta, and Andrew Bosworth, who's still there, got into an argument publicly, very publicly, about what happened and why Palmer Lucky got fired from there. The fact that he even got fired when there was some debate of whether or not he had left willingly. All I can say on this is over the years we've seen a lot of the top executives at Meta leave for one reason or another, especially ones that were unhappy with how things were handled with VR, the future of it, and it leaves a lot of us questioning what Meta's intentions are, especially when they change our name to Meta and where the future of VR is going to go if they continue to have this tight of a grip on the entire industry. That's why I've mentioned before, I'm happy to see Apple entering the space, Google and Samsung coming back. Competition's always important and one company basically running things usually never works, but if you want to read more there will be some links to that down below. If you are one of the people who the newest Quest software update has reached, you might have checked out the lying down mode that's now on Quest 3, even though it was already on Quest 2 and Quest Pro from the last update. As it's rolled out, some news media outlets are talking about it and how it actually is more of a game changer for them than they expected. One of the top writers over at Mixed News was talking about how they actually have an herniated disc in their back and being able to lie down actually allows them to do a lot more VR, even with applications that you would usually play at least sitting up or standing because standing or sitting for long periods 
periods of time can aggravate that disc. VR already is a tough medium, especially when it comes to accessibility because so much of it is done through so much bodily movement. Some games can't even really be played sitting down. They have to be standing up. You need space in the room around you. And it's actually one of the things that's made it harder for VR to reach the mainstream over the years because it's not like sitting down and playing on your PS5. It is work. A lot of times you have to get the headset on, you gotta get your controllers, you gotta map out a space if the game requires space, you gotta be able to move around space without the worry of hitting a kid or hitting your animal. An interesting fact that was brought up though is a lot of people have played VR for years now and their body has become resistant to VR motion sickness. Lying down and then moving suddenly reset everything for some people back to stage one. Now with your body in a full lying down position and when you feel like you're moving forward, it's more like you're kind of moving upward with the way you're laying, it can bring that sickness back for people. It's interesting to me to think of it this way because I have been doing VR so long, I've basically tried to do it every way you possibly can. And for me though, lying down mode still only really made sense with something where you're like watching a show or a movie. I was running through the full game of the Pirate Queen last night and I tried to try lying down mode for a minute and between that and teleportation, it just felt so wrong. But if you're out there, you're using lying down mode and you're liking it and it's having other applications for you, I'd love to hear about in the comments. It's been coming up more and more as we pivot over to wireless standalone VR that PC VR seems to be dying a bit. We saw Vario this last year cut the arrow, their only consumer friendly headset. And now that might actually be benefiting the Quest lineup as Vario is opening up their XR streaming platforms and allowing the Quest 3 and Quest Pro to actually utilize that. This is of course the subscription based Vario Reality Cloud service, which basically uses powerful cloud based GPUs, allowing you to play much more powerful games on anything through streaming. It's interesting to see the ripple effect that the Quest is having on the entire industry. And now Pimax is once again talking about new PC VR dedicated headsets. Pimax was the one that made the Crystal, which also had the same type of processor the Quest line has so that it could be standalone or PC. And it looks like they may be pivoting back to satisfying that PC VR crowd a little bit as it's felt like there really wasn't many new headsets. Now Pimax is dropping two new headsets, the Crystal Light, I guess they did spell light differently, but I feel like that's almost a copyright issue with the drink, and the Crystal Super. Both of these no longer have any sort of standalone chipset to where they can be played without a PC, but the Crystal Light would be $700, that's without controllers and other things you would need if you didn't already have them, $1,800 Crystal Super. The Crystal Light has the same 2880 by 2880 resolution that the Crystal has, but gets rid of the eye tracking. The $700 base model also lacks the mini LED local dimming, but if you want to go up to the $900 model, you can get that. The Crystal Super also comes in two different models, both with 4K displays, with the higher end model using micro OLED. Upload VR made a nice chart, which will pop up on the screen here, so you can kind of see the full comparison while we're talking about these. But it has been a tough question when a lot of you ask, what's a good PC VR headset if I want one that's dedicated and not something like the Quest 3 where I'm plugging it in, I'm still having to worry about battery life. And it's been like, well, the index is five years old, but it's still what a lot of people use. The big screen beyond is new. It's nice to see some more good news potentially for the crowd who's really dedicated to having a committed PC VR headset. Still though, personally, I will say at these price points and the different features, none of these are really tempting me to get one again. I find that when there's a PC VR game I really want to play, usually wireless PC is the way I like to go, although I can just use a link cable with the Quest. I still weirdly miss my Rift S. I just feel like it worked well. It was always hooked up. It was ready to go. It wasn't without its pitfalls, but if you're out there thinking about this, what would you want to see on PC? I think the Valve Deckard is personally what I'm really waiting. I'm maybe putting a few too many eggs in that basket, but I really am hoping that they bring something around that feels as exciting as the Index did at the time. We're now approaching three months since the launch of the Apple Vision Pro, and we're seeing more and more applications coming out for it and more support. Although nothing still feels like it's the reason you should get the headset, I will say after getting to try one, get my eyes in one for a little while, I do see some of the benefits and kind of the vision that they're trying to work towards. It's been interesting if you haven't followed it, we're seeing now it's been used in surgery. All kinds of different companies are developing apps to try and help with either productivity, training, or even using these things in the field when it comes to repairing things. And there was a few experiences that actually wowed me more than I expected. I got to do the dinosaur where you reach out and a butterfly lands on your finger. And something about seeing your actual hands in front of the environment when I held my hand up to the dinosaur for it to sniff it, I didn't see a virtual representation. I saw my real hand as its mouth got close and it nipped at my hand and it gave me a visceral reaction. I got scared. I pulled my hand back away because something about seeing my real hand actually helped with that immersion a lot. It doesn't mean I'm considering dropping $3,500 anytime soon on one, but it is getting me starting to thinking about what the future of Apple can actually bring over if they make a cheaper one, hopefully one that works better, just is an approachable price point for people, also something a little more comfortable. But for those of you out there who have been wondering about it for a while, I definitely wouldn't say go buy one, but I will say if you get to test it, you do get to see a little bit of something different that Apple 
Apple brings that just other headsets haven't tried to do yet or haven't pulled off quite. That does get me a little bit more excited again about the future of all the competition entering the space. Hearing names like Samsung and Google back in the space again, it feels like the future of VR, AR, XR is feeling a little bit brighter again. But with all that said, what do you think? What are you looking forward to? What has you excited in it? If you're mostly just following the Quest lineup, we're looking towards hopefully a Quest 3 Lite, maybe a Quest Pro 2 or whatever they want to call it, if they call it a Quest 3 Pro. I don't know what they're going to do there. It seems like it's going to be another year of more and more innovation, but probably still not the year we're going to hit the mainstream if I'm being fully honest with you. That's a long, tedious process and things need to get more comfortable, more approachable and just easier. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. I want to say thank you once again for being here with me today and I'll see you in another reality. Yeah.